back. The, the first thing you must do is you must see it. Somebody holler back at me and say, you must see it. You, you, you must see it. You must see it. You must see it, and you must see it through the eyes of faith. You got to see it. See, I, I can imagine when, when, when George was working in a dry cleaners for somebody else, something happened where he began to see himself not as an employee of a dry cleaners, but he began to see himself as an owner of a dry cleaning chain. He began to see as he was carrying your clothes to your car, he began to see himself. He began to see his name on the building. He began to stop looking at what he was looking at and start looking at what God was seeing. And I dare you right now to stop looking at what you are seeing and start seeing what God is seeing. You must look through the eyes of faith. Watch this, watch this, watch this. When I put on dark shades, everything I see now comes in a little darker. Whatever the color of the lens are will determine the tint and the shade of what I see. So I must take off the darkness, take off the fear, take off the doubt, take off the feeling of low self-esteem. I must take off anything that's Stops me from seeing me as a king and her as a queen. I must remove anything from my eyes that don't look like the prize. I have to look through the eyes of faith. See, George had to see himself being a boss. Even when nobody around him saw him that way. I'm trying to get you to see something. Stop worrying about who's endorsing you this season. Stop trying to get validation and certification from your folks. If your folks could see it in you, they would have saw it in themselves. If you're going to be a pioneer, if you're going to be a navigator, if you're going to be the one God uses to bust open generational curses, you can't expect the folks around you under the curse to see what you see. Somebody got to be the Moses. Somebody got to say, Lord, I see things differently. Somebody got to say, I know what the scoreboard said last season. But I'm believing this season. We're going to win. Do I have anybody in this house? Do I have anybody that's made their minds up? I'm going to look at life through the eyes of faith. And faith tells me all things are possible. Faith tells me I can do it. Faith tells me I can win. Faith tells me I'm victorious. Faith tells me I'm more than a conqueror. Faith tells me I can get back up. Faith tells me with me and my God, nobody. God told the children of Israel while they were still slaves. God spoke to some people that were in bondage, captivity, and enslaved. And God told them, there is a land with your name on it. And you might as well call it the promised land. 
Has God ever spoken to you while you were going through? While you were still in your mess? While you were still broke? While you were still addicted? While you were in prison? While you were in a crack house? While you were in a poor house? While you were in an unemployment line? While you were in divorce court? While you were praying for your child on his way or her way to prison? Has God ever spoken to you in a place like that? And God tells these people, oh, good God Almighty, God tells these people, you will leave this place of enslavement and you will enter into a promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey, a land with houses you did not build. A land that's fruitful, a land that's bountiful, a land that's rich, a land that's wealthy. God said you would have it all at your disposal. Watch this, watch this. So God tells Moses, gather 12 of your best men. Send them into the land. So they can come back with a praise report. You would think that if God said it, all 12 men would have came back dancing and rejoicing and celebrating. Yet the Bible says Caleb and Joshua began to scream, we can do this. But the other ten spies, which means the minority of people, excuse me, the majority of the people, the masses, everybody else, Ray Ray them. they said, yeah, it's out there, but there's no way we can do this. In our eyes, remember the eyes of faith. Because you will not go anywhere that you don't see yourself belonging. The ten spies, David said, yes, the promise is out there, but we don't see ourselves occupying the promise. In our eyes, we look like grasshoppers and they look like giants. But Caleb and Joshua said, I don't know what they looking at, Tony Jones. I don't know what they looking at, Andrea. I don't know what they looking at. Because when I see the land, I, I see God's name stamped all over it. When I look at the land, I, I see God saying, EA, you and Marcus Wack can have that. When I look at the land. I was reading my Bible, Santos. I ran across Brother Joseph. And the Bible says, God spoke greatness in his spirit. Uh, God told Joseph, who should have been the most insignificant of his brothers, because you got to understand the culture and the history. The oldest son had the birthright. The youngest son had to wait in a long line until all the other brethren had fallen out of place. But God doesn't need your culture. God doesn't need your democracy. God doesn't need your vote. God doesn't need the way you do things. God doesn't need your tradition. God doesn't need you to decide who he going to elevate, who he going to promote, and who he going to put the blessing on. So God told Joseph, I'm going to take you from tailship to headship. Do you see it? I, I got I to gotta, I gotta bounce for a second. A pretty young thing about to bounce out here, but Joseph found himself in a pit. You would think if God said, I'm 
get ready to blow you up. Joseph will be coasting in a Bentley. Yet the next time I see Joseph, he in a pit. Yet in a pit, the Bible says the favor of the Lord was on him in a pit. Joseph crawled and climbed his way out of a pit. Is there anybody here? You might be in a pit right now, but I see myself in a palace. I might be in a pit right now, but I see myself coming out of this pitiful situation. I might be in a pit right now, but I'll never change my address to the address of the pit. I might be in a pit, but I don't see the pit. So God brought him out the pit. But before he got to the palace, the Bible says Joseph found himself in prison for a crime he did not commit. The Bible says Joseph, the dreamer, ended up in jail for a crime he did not commit. See, it's one thing to end up in jail. If I did it, I got to charge it to the game. It's one thing to end up in trouble if I sow the seed of trouble. But there is a whole other thing to end up in a prison when I've been a good boy. It's a whole other thing to end up in a bad place when I've been doing the right thing. But I want you to know, even in prison, Joseph didn't see himself as a prisoner. In a prison, the Bible says he started prophesying. He started sharing the dreams. The dreamer became a dream interpreter. What am I saying? As I slide out of here, I'm telling you, you got to see yourself in another place. You got to see yourself where God sees you. You got to see yourself well. You got to see yourself healthy. You got to see yourself Falling and shot calling, you gotta see yourself because before you move, you gotta see it. That's why they have goalposts on the football field. That's why they have markers on the football field. If you take away the goalposts and you take away the markers, I won't be motivated when a big lineman get in front of me. But when you put the marker and the goalposts, I see myself. 